All right, so we're doing some more work on the van here. It's time to change the uh, belts and tensioners and idlers on this. So I've got that set up on the table here. So I like to use uh, Gates products for this. You're welcome to use uh, whatever you desire. The Gates has uh, green stripe belts here. So they're good for, you inspect them at 60,000 miles, replace them at 90,000 miles. And uh, again, so there's two belts on this vehicle. The air conditioner is tucked in behind the main serpentine belt. So to get to this guy, you more or less have to take care of this one. So there's going to be three other parts that you need. So for the air conditioner, you'll need a tensioner for it. And uh, there's a problem with the, the way they mounted these air conditioners originally. So there's a bullet in here. So if you got a lot of like banging sounds coming from down beneath your engine under acceleration and whatnot, look up that bullet in there. And what happens is the uh, oil goes into the AC compressor and it starts making this thing swing back and forth. And uh, it's actually damaging itself. So you'll need to look into that. So these are all gates uh, tensioners. It's kind of funny, so the belts are made in Mexico, then the tensioners and pulleys are made in Canada. So that's a nice surprise. Don't always find stuff made in Canada anymore. So we got that. It's got some questionably photocopied uh, instructions. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, basically talks about the oil slugging issue. Then for the... Uh, other belt. Let's see, I've got a uh, tool here for uh, changing serpentine belts. I've never had one before. You always need to like double up your wrenches to get enough strength to pop them out. So uh, we'll see if we need that for this job or not. It seems like by the time I go and buy a tool for a job, you don't need it anymore. So I don't know why that keeps happening to me. But anyway, so you get uh, an idler here. Comes with a fastener. More instructions, don't cut the belt off, not a good idea. Then there's uh, another tensioner here. Sorry, bear with me while I try to see if I can see anything here because the uh, sunlight's been a bit of an issue today, but hopefully we can get the message across regardless of how the sun's behaving. So we've got that. We'll have to take the uh, air cleaner out. We're gonna move the uh, coolant reservoir off to the side. Then uh, we'll draw a sketch of the uh, belts uh, as to what their routing is. There's no picture sticker under the hood of this thing. I don't know if there's one in the manual or not. I guess I could take a peek. But anyway, we're going to uh, tackle that. So we'll take a look at the way the vehicle's set up. I'm sort of uh, up in the air, literally, as to how much height I wanted to work on this. So uh, I kind of... I don't know if I'm four inches off the ground like that, four and a half. When I went all the way to the top of my ramps, it was too high. You couldn't work from above. And then when you go on the ground, you're too low. You can't work from beneath. So, uh, like I said, you'll need to use a uh, 10 millimeter to pop these guys off, pop that off. And the air cleaner, we'll take it off of the, uh, I don't know if it's a throttle body or what down there. We'll take that off. That's a eight millimeter down there, you'll need a socket. You can't get the, a wrench around these little guys. Down below, there's a little air dam. Might take that off, just a couple plastic fitting, or a couple fittings to hold that on. But then we'll, we'll take a look from below once we get a little more deeper into this job. All right, so let's have at it. that stool here so I can reach. Electrical connector here. Hopefully it's easy to pop off and not curse this. Yeah, so you just pinch on that uh, guy there and you can pull it out without any harm. I think we are free. Reach in here and get the uh, clamp off the hose.
too many extensions. Looks like we're near the end of that. Something else holding us in. What could it be? All right, there's a couple rubber plugs here. Stick that back in. Put this aside somewhere safe. I'll be back in a second. what this gray clip is that fell off but we will figure that out so you can see the throttle body in there I'm just gonna stick a cloth around that so nothing falls in flies in or what have you That there. Just gonna reposition the camera. Move this thing out of the way. Got the towels now. I if it's related to that. I think that's the only fastener on this thing. Yeah, stabbed in the back. Say it anyway. Maybe not the best way. So I'm just going to pop the camera off the tripod here and start investigating what we're working on. So we got pretty good access. I took the uh, reservoir off so we could reach down to the tensioner. I find that access is always very desirable. Like I said, I think this belt's original. I've got some of the uh, maintenance paperwork on this vehicle, and uh, I couldn't find anything about the belt. And it hasn't been changed in at least five years. So I think it's time to do it. So, looks like on this side, the belt kind of goes down underneath of the crank. Oh God, where does it go from there? Can't really tell. Probably oh, maybe. Anyway, that's why we're looking at this to try to figure it out. Yeah, it has to go around the crank because the crank has got uh, grooves in it as you would expect. And it goes around the power steering pump back up under that's either it's got to get okay so it goes around the crank and it comes back around the water pump and the fan that's where I was losing part of it So I think I better sketch this out, otherwise we're going to get into trouble. So I'll just uh, stop the camera in a second so I can draw that. And the air conditioner, I think we saw it earlier, but way down there, there's a second belt and a second tensioner hiding down there. So we're going to have to go after that as well. So let's shut things down for a second, record our findings, and then get back to work. All right, so we did our map of the belt and the uh, pulleys, got that figured out. There was a plastic clip that turned up during the work. Turns out it was uh, related to the uh, electrical conductor on the uh, air system, air intake system. So I just slipped back, that back in. It looks like you need to pop that out. Whoever had uh, this uh, part the last time must have uh, lost track of that and it was just sitting underneath. 
This van did have the all or the radiator replaced uh, some time ago. It's uh, had a bit of a slow leak issue. Haven't fully figured it out yet. But I was told that uh, this hose could be uh, a problem where it mounts on the radiator. So I gotta go take a peek at that later on. Turns out that the uh, this is going to be 50% useful. So it's a 15 millimeter socket that you're going to use, but it's not deep enough to uh, reach past everything. So we're going to use a 15 millimeter socket out of another set. One thing I was going to show you is, uh, it's 15, let's take a look at this. Yeah, 15 millimeter. So anyway, a regular 15 millimeter wrench is only like that long. You're not going to have enough uh, leverage to do this job. There's some slots in the uh, fan shroud. Actually, I'm pretty happy about that. So basically, I don't know if you can show that arrow to you or not, but you want to have the uh, wrench kind of pointed here. Then you'll swing it back over to here, and then you'll know you have got enough uh, tension on the uh, tensioner to get the belt off. So let's see if we can get the camera finagled into place here, where you can see that happen. Bear with me. It's one thing to do it, another thing to film it and have it be somewhat useful. Yes, yeah, so there's a, a wrench I was going to show you for the length comparison. So, good luck. Didn't use that today. Still trying to figure this out. Maybe we'll see something like that. Then, uh, when you're putting this on, if it doesn't fit on the uh, tensioner the first time around, you can just clock the socket 90 degrees and that will help you. So you gotta reach in past the fan, get onto the tensioner. You don't wanna damage the fan. I'm sure it's fairly pricey. Want the wrench kind of facing up. There we are, just slightly engaged. We can show that to you or not. So turn that and go a little bit further and you can tuck it in under here. And now your belt is going to be loose. If you pull it off with the tensioner it would be easier to do it there. Because I'm trying to pull slack all the way around. Let's go. Feeling pretty good about this. Just about got it out. It's got us swinging around the fan all the way around now. on something. Oh, it's quite a puzzle. I prefer to do this here rather than on the side of the road because of how much of a puzzle it really is. Again, you want to be very careful. You don't want to damage the fan or the fan clutch. Uh, who knows how much effort it is to take that stuff out. So I'll get this thing finagled out of there and we'll compare it to the new belt and make sure that they match. All right, so I was able to get the belt out. So it's uh, check the belt. 
you just put them uh, on your thumbs here and uh, pull them out. Make sure that they're the same length. It's going to be a little bit tricky. The new belt's going to be a bit kinked up a little. So check that, so that's good. Uh, if you're off by just a fraction uh, of an inch, it can be a problem at times. On the old belt, it has like a, a good numbering system, for, so it's six for the number of uh, cogs on the belt. Then that's the length, it's like 2.365 meters long. The replacement belt is just a, a part number, I don't know why they would do that, it's kind of annoying. And then uh, you take the old belt, belt and you can see that it's starting to crack up a little bit. So it's uh, getting near the end of its life and like I said it uh, appears to be an original GM belt. So uh, some people like to save these, then they just take up space, so just throw it away, don't keep it around. If you break down on the side of the highway because you have a bad belt, you're probably not going to be able to fix it. So now we're going to get the uh, AC belt out of there and uh, start putting it back together. Alright, so I just discovered I was losing a bunch of antifreeze, so uh, pull your uh, antifreeze overflow hose and flip it up so it's uh, facing upwards so you don't lose any antifreeze when you got your uh, reservoir moved to the side. So to take the uh, AC tensioner off, you just need a 3 8 uh, ratchet. So we'll go into there and do that. All right, so two discoveries. One was I didn't remove the uh, air dam off the front here, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, for the tensioner, using a regular 3 8 ratchet wasn't gonna work. I tried the uh, three inch extension, it was too long. So I'm gonna try to use a flex head to do that. So this is a 15 millimeter. Get that in frame or not, I can't see anything. Sorry. Yeah, so that gives you a bit more of an opportunity to see what is going on. It's more for you than for me, I think. We'll find out. I can only go in here to get that. It's going to be the wrong way. Turn that back again. Yeah. So with this belt, you're going to flip it over towards the engine to get it off. And then you can just have it out. Yeah. So there you go. So we'll go, I'll just verify this off camera, it's the right belt. Again, it's another uh, original GM belt. I can't see what you're focusing on, but it's a GM 15 or 12576447 belt for PK960 EB. Again, it appears to be the original one. So now I need to take the uh, tensioners off as well as the uh, one idler pulley. So we'll get onto that in a minute. I'm just going to turn off the camera if I can reach it. Alright, so I got the uh, belt off. I got a bit of grease on it when I took it down. So I just greased the chassis before this job actually. So I just put some uh, cloth down over uh, one of the joints in the suspension so it doesn't get any grease on it. So the uh, belt matches up. The uh, tensioner is not super strong. So it's pretty easy to work with. And it's got two 15 millimeter bolts holding it on. So I'm going to do an attempt to swap this thing in one scene. I'm going to remove it just by hand with a, a wrench, so it might be a little bit slow going. Otherwise, you'd lose your vantage point if I uh, did it with the uh, impact gun. And then the bearing on this I, tensioner is shot. I don't know if you can hear that or not. But it spins really easy. It's got a bit of a rattle to it, so it's done.
pretty easy to do the uh, AC belt actually. But unfortunately it's in behind the uh, main serpentine belt, which is uh, the bigger problem. I saw a family that had like a Cadillac Escalade in town and their belt broke and they were hoping to get it changed on like a long weekend and they were not able to get into a garage and they looked pretty depressed. There was like seven of them all inside of this vehicle and the AC was down on like the hottest day of the year unfortunately. So uh, it's good to do your maintenance up front rather than waiting for it to break. Use the impact gun and just zing this right off. But nothing work bad would work on your dexterity, keeping that up. You needed to have it up on ramps to do this, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get your noggin underneath of the uh, cross member. But again, you don't need to be too high up. I don't think you can get a gear wrench in here either. It's pretty tight quarters. So first one. Nice galvanized fasteners. Just very handy. Nice of them to do that. I kind of wish I did this one first now the way it fell down. I don't know if you can tell or not, but my transmission lines are getting kind of juicy on the outside. So they need to be replaced. Probably not this year. I think I've got enough uh, maintenance set up for this thing for the year. I won't be able to pull that off. I noticed that I got oil on the back of my Jeep right now too. I'm not really sure where that's coming from. So I gotta dive in there and figure that out. I got the right number of vehicles, just enough to keep me busy all the time, but still able to keep them on the road. We don't do anything on the Honda. I don't really care for it. Hopefully it just burns down one day and it'll be gone. I'll get a real car. There, just about got this one out. So close. I got take a look at that after the job. See if we can swing my arms around and get the other one. Oh, you think I would have paid attention to what its orientation was? Huh. <laughs> I probably should have done that. Hopefully there's a thing to prevent you from putting in wrong. But yeah, I think it probably goes that way. We'll go with that. Right? Sure. Easier when you're watching it, because you can remember what I, where I had it. Or you could just back it up. I think that's right. Don't have a torque value for this. We're just going to tighten it. So it's tight. There are 15 millimeter heads on this so they could take quite a bit of torque without breaking. Maybe more than you're going to need. Challenging, this part's kind of compact. There's no alignments to do on this, it just goes in. There's no shims or anything like that.
this at the perfect height. I don't need to do any squats or anything. Or just kind of laying on my back with one arm up or two arms up. Nice, easy reach. just about on. Move on to the next one. You leave them the one snug before you get the other one on tight so that they're not bound up. Threads are nice and clean because I just took them off. Nice and easy. These are fairly long wrenches, so you don't want to overdo it with them. That feels nice and tight. So wipe my hands off on my coat, get them nice and clean, get this cloth here, over this idler arm fitting. And now I'm going to have to get the ratchet on here. So we'll get the belt kind of in there first. Before we introduce the ratchet. So I swing this right over the crank pulley and over the back of it. That gives you lots of belt to work with. Kind of like pushing on a rope. That rope is not frozen. Swing that over the AC. That feels pretty good. I'm going to swing it over the top of the crank. Oh, I need another elbow. That would make it all so much better. like I've got pretty close. Uh, the ratchet I just had. Of course you can see this and I can't. It's always helpful. I hope I don't have this thing upside down. That's got to go other way. So now I gotta hoop it onto the top. <laughs> Not how I'd recommend it, but it's just the way it's going is I gotta get it onto the top of the crank pull here. Oh, I wish I could hook this onto something. I wonder if I can. If I go fly it. Pushing contest as usual. These belts are always fun. 
so close. We got it. We'll get it. I a stick to reach up there. <laughs> just, just about got it. Just gonna get a couple more cranks on the ratchet. Oh, I think I got it. This camera over here. See from my perspective. So that's on. I don't know which way the words are facing. Hopefully that doesn't bother anybody watching right now. So now it looks like my battery is getting ready to die. So I'm gonna get organized to change the uh, tensioner and the uh, Either on the uh, main drive system. All right, excuse the angle. We're going to try to get the last little bit out of our battery. So the tensioner is here. It's pretty good. And the idler. I don't know if we can see it or not. It's sorry. That's the idler here. And it's, bearing is reasonable. Down here is the uh, tensioner. So it's. It's sad. Time to go. So, it's 15 millimeter for both of them. For the uh, idler, it's just through the center of it. Just going to use a regular 3 8 ratchet. A socket. I had it on here a second ago. Now it's got stage fright. too easy. I put the socket on there to work with it. My hand is coming off nice. Just about got it. So the whole thing, as you see, is a replaceable unit. I don't think I'll keep that as a spare either. I'm done with keeping spare parts around for ages. We can set things up to see this or not. There's just three 15s on it. It's nice working on campers when you can get access to stuff because they are not normally used in the winter. So they're not normally rusty, which is fantastic. I kind of need to get my hand past the camera. Get the last bolt. I mean, the exercise here was just to show that you can reach uh, three bolts with the regular ratchet. So I'm not going to bore you to death with removing them all. So I'll turn off the camera, go charge up the battery, and we'll put it back together. Alright, so I got the uh, idler pulley on, as we talked about. Now, uh, while I was waiting for the battery to charge up, I decided to change some of the uh, clamps on the uh, coolant return system, the overflow system. So you need one 11 to 13 millimeter, then uh, three or four 14 to 16 millimeter clamps if you're gonna do this. There's like a, the return from the block is actually like a throttle body heater job. And I couldn't tell if it might have been leaking in there or not. So that's why I uh, decided to go after that. with the light. You'll see that the uh, water pump is down here as well, the thermostat. You 
Sniper need to get access to these things. So I'm going to put the uh, new tensioner on. I'm going to do that off camera. All you need to really know is that there's two long bolts and a short bolt. They're all 15 millimeter. That's the, uh, the new tensioner. So I'll get the tensioner on. I'll get the belt kind of in position. And then we'll uh, use this tool here to get the belt on the last little bit. And then I think we'll be more or less done the job. Thank you. Alright, so one thing that wasn't really... Uh, something I noticed the first time doing this was that the uh, belt isn't wrapped around the uh, water pump in such a way that you need to feed it around the fan as far as I can tell. So I went and put the belt down on the bottom worked its way back this way and I'm just uh, getting ready to put it under the tensioner so uh, I'm just going to get things kind of in position and then we'll get it on here. Alright so to get the belt on like I said, you don't need to put it around the fan. Like you don't need to turn the fan and flip it through one blade at a time. It just goes uh, around everything else. So that's pretty handy. I found that in order to get the uh, tool on the tensioner, the belt needs to be on the tensioner. So there's uh, a nut or a bolt just on this side of the uh, alternator. So I got the belt kind of resting on that. So we'll see if we can get enough tension to uh, put this belt on. Nope. We'll put it back on the uh, nut there. Get that off. I'd move the socket on here, so I gotta put it back where it belongs. I tell you, putting on serpentine belts is not something I've been super fast with. I can get it done, but it's kind of slow and tedious for me. Some people seem to have a knack for it, but I do not. That doesn't stop me from going forward anyway. Of course the camera just moved on me. Anyway, I'm just trying to get the uh, socket on the tensioner. Challenging, I'll tell you that. It's quite possible that this uh, bolt on the tensioner is in a different spot than where it started. this van will never run again and that's not really an option challenging I guess I'd we'll get it So this tool is kind of hard as well. Go for another try here. hearing promising sounds and I look down this never seems to be on. Got it. Let's see if we can find enough tension in this slack in this belt to get it on. I'm trying to get bent past this I really shouldn't have to force anything though, so that's a bit of a concern. Alright, we will try to use a, uh, a wrench and just force it on. Just bear with me for a second. 
All right, so the struggle continues. I've got my uh, 15 millimeter wrench on the tensioner. Instead of trying to get it around the alternator, I'm gonna try to get it around the uh, idler, see if there's any more success with that. The spring on the tensioner isn't quite as tough as I expected it to be. So let's see. That is a certain challenge. Got it! Afraid you might not have been able to see that. But, uh, so I have it on all of the pulleys. I had to crank the tensioner quite far. Now I've got the belt on all the pulleys. I'll go take a peek underneath just to verify. Yeah, so the belt is where it needs to be on all of the uh, pulleys sitting on, uh, about being uneven. Position. So let's see if there's any chance of starting this engine with the camera where it is. Seems like there is a safe way of doing this. Nothing in the fan. It's funny, it lost its uh, tension there. Alright, so uh, let's fire this up and see if everything goes to hell. Or, uh, actually, I guess I better not turn it on. I don't have the intake on. That would be a very bad idea. So normally on a vehicle at this point, I would fire it up to uh, make sure the belts are going to hold on. But I guess we're not going to do that on this one. So I'm just going to button up the uh, reservoir and the uh, air intake system. And uh, we'll fire it up at that point. So hopefully we don't need to go any steps backward. All right, so we'll fire it up and uh, see if the belt holds on or not. One day I'll figure out how this thing works. It's alluded to me so far. I lost a little bit of coolant. I'm just going to hose down the vehicle just to rinse off any coolant so it doesn't leave any uh, stains on anything. It's not as bad as brake fluid or anything, but I like to get rid of it. Anyway, got the uh, air dam back on there. Doesn't seem to be any issues. So sorry there's a couple of goofs in this video. But that's uh, real life, you've got to do some trial and error. Now you've seen my trials and errors and what worked and what didn't. So you can skip uh, making those mistakes. You don't hear any uh, bearing noise or anything. I did check the alternator. It was uh, nice and tight. I checked the water pump and it was nice and tight when I had things off. So uh, it's time to put my tools away. And I'll be good, done for the evening. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.